coming at you live from the RV. Time to tear it up, dude. We've arrived to the balcony house and they're giving us a little window into what to expect. Number one, we're gonna be going up. Definitely a much longer ladder than the last one. This one's making me the most nervous because I do have a little bit of claustrophobia. Yeah, we are gonna need to dislocate one of your freaking shoulders. Then it looks like going up some like man-made stairs. And then again, another ladder. I do like how sturdy these ladders feel. So this is where the ancestral Pueblo people lived. Oh my God. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How you doing? Hi. Very well. There you are. We are heading to Cliff Palace this morning. Okay. Um, you're just going to go 20 miles straight up the road, make two left hand turns, and then like two more miles, but there'll be plenty of signage up there. All right. Sounds All right. good. Appreciate good it. Cheers. Thank you. Nice Cheers. guy. <laughs> Heck yeah. Morning coffee. <laughs> Cheers, me, man. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Mesa Verde. <laughs> And he's hiding in those cliff dwellings. Did I find you? Yes, the cliff dwellings on the mesas where thriving communities used to live long, long ago. That was good! Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're doing. We got up at the ass crack of dawn. First thing, Olivia got the coffee going. Ah, what is that? Oh! oh. Ah. Moth. <laughs> where is he? It's just a moth. I think he just went out. Did it? You sure? Uh, I need some certainty here. We almost <laughs> got bitch slapped by a moth. Well, that's a very uh, oh, traumatizing God. way to wake up. Now we are going through a dark, dark tunnel, but we are keeping this going. Ooh, Don't very, shut very it down. Spooky. Yes, very, very Halloween spooky. is uh, coming soon. <laughs> I'm so sad. I just can't. I know, I know, I know. We actually have two excursions planned, two tours planned today. One is pretty easy and one is kind of sketchy. We're starting with the easy one first. It's called Cliff Palace. And the second one's called Balcony House. And that's the one, you both need reservations for those. So even with our National Park Pass, we actually had to pay a separate fee for each tour because there is a guide involved and they're gonna you know, show you the way and make sure and give you some education on the place. So okay, the let's... worst fucking bathroom ever <laughs> in there. I had to literally pee with my face in my jacket and I still almost puked. <laughs> and it wasn't like the fresh smell, like someone just took a fucking dump in there. It wasn't that. It was like, there's layers and layers of dumps in there that have not been removed in maybe a decade. I can't remember the last time I almost projectiled because of a smell. In the last 20 years, I can't even think of a time. I literally almost chundered all over my vans. <laughs> You're ready? Yeah, dude. Lily says I'm channeling the kid from Up. <laughs> he's, hey, he's my spirit animal. Knew <laughs> it. On June 29, 1906, President Theodore Roosevelt established Mesa Verde National Park to quote unquote, preserve the works of man, making it the first national park of its kind. The ancestral Pueblo people of Mesa Verde built these elaborate stone communities in the sheltered alcoves of the canyon walls almost 1400 years ago and thrived and flourished here for more than 700 years. Today, over half a million people visit this national park each year, and it's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Making our way down. 
starting the tour. So the park ranger just let us know it's gonna be strenuous and there's gonna be a lot of elevation. Luckily, we're already kind of like adjusted to like 7,000 feet. I'm not gonna lie, there's quite a bit of older people here. Some with maybe some bad knees, bad hips. They're crushing it, uh, but they did let us know it's gonna be very strenuous going back up. Supposedly up some stairs or ladders, not really quite sure. I'm also gonna be talking quiet like this so I don't disturb anybody else. So. Hopefully you guys can hear me. <laughs> Doing this one-handed. Silo of an area is this giant Mesa Verde region. This is where the ancestral Pueblo people lived. And uh, what's cool is like these, these natural mesas create these shelters where essentially, you know, they're, they're protected from wind, from rain, and they're able to oftentimes collect natural water from springs that are ingrained into these pockets. It's, it's actually a, an incredible feat for them to build this because when, you, when we're looking around, there's no foundation. They had to create the foundation themselves. And, uh, and the average height, I asked because I was curious because all these openings, these doorways and windows are like tiny. You have to like slither through them. But the average height was between five and five foot five. Yeah. So basically men were about Olivia's height <laughs> and women were about my mom's height. Your mom's feet. height, yeah. <laughs> yeah right, right here under my chin, right there. <laughs> this is the largest village in uh, Mesa Verde National Park. And it's so well maintained because one, we can't touch anything, which is, makes sense with natural oils and all that kind of stuff. But two, they did a phenomenal job. They said about 75 to 80% of it is original. And then they've had to support some places just because obviously with time, I think it's starting to move downward. So anyways, it's really special. We got here early and it's a good time because the light is not harsh or anything, you know, bright sun on it. So we can actually see it clearly and see all the detail in the wall and stuff. So it's awesome. <laughs> so we just learned there's handholds all the way up now. How cool is that? Alex Honnold would be happy. <laughs> I feel very sturdy. I feel very safe on this. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I was a little bit wondering, I'm like, ladders? Hmm. <laughs> but no, these are heavy duty ones. Yeah. And look, we still got one more to the very top. All right, back to the car. Nathan's taking a quick early lunch. We have an hour till the next tour. But um, that place was awesome. Not gonna lie, all I wanted in that moment was a nap in my bed. And you wanna know why? Cause we got the best Avi mattress in the game. Avi mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, baby. And all we had when we started off full-time RVing was a stock mattress that already came with the RV and a cheapo foam topper. And let me tell you, they had to go cause they offered no support. And I'm actually surprised we stuck with them as long as we did. But we were lucky to come across Brooklyn Bedding because they offer many different sizes to fit your rig and you can choose your desired firmness level. And they also offer a 120 night sleep trial, free shipping, it's made in the good old US of A, and a 10 year warranty. So if you're looking to upgrade your mattress like we did, then head to rvmattress.com slash onworldtravel and use our code onworldtravel for 20% off. And don't forget to mention our names in the survey. So this national park is super unique because it's not just about the nature and the wildlife and the things you traditionally expect in a national park, but it's more about a, a unique community of people that lived here a long, long time ago and farmed here and essentially established their homes in cliffs, in the side of cliffs, which is, yeah, I've, I've never seen that before. We recently both learned about Mesa Verde National Park and we we're like, oh, we should stop by, but we didn't know really what to expect and are actually blown away because they don't just have three main tours to go on, but there's actually hundreds of pullouts where you can see like smaller versions of these dwellings all throughout the park. So 
Enjoy! <laughs> We've arrived to the balcony house and they're giving us a little window into what to expect. Number one, we're gonna be going up. Definitely a much longer ladder than the last one. Number two, this one's making me the most nervous because I do have a little bit of claustrophobia. Then it looks like going up some like man-made stairs. And then again, another ladder. So the first thing is do's and don'ts. Health and safety issues. It's making friends, always making friends. Just for your knowledge sake, uh, the peak that's furthest to the left is Hesperus. And that's one of the four sacred mountains of the Navajo Nation. And it's called Dibanasa. So far, I'm really liking this hike. You ready for the ladder? Heck yeah, dude. I'm the last one on. <laughs> Nobody to catch me. <laughs> I like that his hands are holding that middle log, just in case. <laughs> if you look closely, do you see him? Oh, yeah. Hand, hand, foot, foot. And you got foot and foot. So what were our instructions? Hand, hand, foot, foot. Don't look Don't down. look up or down. Yeah. No way. This is definitely a tight. Oh, oh, watch your backpack. Yeah, I would take it off. Yeah. We just made it through the ladder. Now we're making our way up. I am a little claustrophobic, so I don't really love this. Okay. Here, give it to me. Okay. You got it, you got it. <laughs> yeah, I would not make a very good cliff woman, 100% too claustrophobic for you. Oh my God. That was probably a room, like somebody's room. You know, you obviously see the, the balcony here, and there's a balcony up there, and a balcony there, and a balcony there. And we just learned this is called Balcony House because it has balconies. So cool. They offered us a little blueprint. <laughs> They'd have the ceremonies here and here, the Kiva A, Kiva B. And the naked fire dancing here. Okay, so we're getting ready to go through the tunnel. A lady just asked if she could go last because she's claustrophobic and I can be too, so hopefully it's not too intense. <laughs> yeah, Olivia doesn't like tight spaces. You got it. I'm going to struggle. Oh. I'm going to take off your backpack. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Look how thin. That is 18 inches. Oh. I got a break because Nathan has to take his backpack off and my heart was racing so much. Yeah. I'm so happy it opened in here Stretched because I thought it was going to be really narrow yeah, for the whole. Okay. It does ah. open though. Okay, that's good. All right. <laughs> okay. okay. Ready? 
Can we grab your backpack? Yeah. And another ladder. Yay, the challenge continues. <laughs> yeah. I have to go to an angle, I think. Yeah, we are going to need to dislocate one of your freaking shoulders. I'll grab your backpack. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. Yeah, on the knees, it's not it's bow, bow yeah. a bone stone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't as scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Not to look, so I'm afraid to. Oh my god. Yeah. Take a picture. <laughs> I love that. Is this a holy <laughs> moment? Yes, it's a holy <laughs> <laughs> moment. <laughs> holy <laughs> fucking moment. Uh, <laughs> I do like how sturdy these ladders feel. Though. Look, look here. <laughs> we made friends with our little professional yeah. photographer. <laughs> and Kevin, bring it on down. That was so freaking cool. That was so freaking cool. Goo, 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 goo. That was so freaking cool. Dude, honestly, blown away. It's like amazing. I always think of like cavemen. These were cliff people, cliff men and women. I feel like they just did a really good job with the tours and that one was really fun. It was definitely an adventure to get to the little village. All right, now we're gonna drive the Mesa Top Loop Road and we're gonna check out some of the viewpoints. You got to National Park, and I'm super excited. Oh my God, our freaking binoculars. We got binoculars. Literally binoculars. I don't know how we went without them for our first year of RV life because all the national parks we went to, we couldn't see close up. All right, now at the Hemingway house. Time to get our binoculars out. Dude, this one's like hella tucked away. Like if you look way, the GoPro won't be able to capture it, but that mesa way down there, that little shaded area, it's right, right in that corner tucked away. I can see, oh my God. 26 rooms. And a big shout out to all our Patreon peeps for supporting our adventures and keeping us out on the road. We love y'all. Coming at you live from the RV. Oh, we got an RV park event happening. And actually, I just misspoke. It's not an RV park, it's an RV resort. <laughs> We've been saying a lot more of those. And let me tell you, the amenities are popping. It's insane what's happening to the RV park industry. But anyway, so today they have a little happy hour from four to six. They do have a bar on site here. And I kind of just want to give you guys a little tour because we haven't yet. Uh, they have laundry facilities, pickleball courts, hey. basketball hoop. The thing that shocked me the most, they have a freaking salon. It's crazy. You can go get your hair did at the RV resort. Crazy. Fix this? Is this fixable? <laughs> Cause I am. Babe, I'm, I don't I'm, think I don't so. Know, dude. Mocha dish, you got hella issues. Issue. Mocha dish, you got hella issues. Right. You know, some RV parks they do bingo night. Well, today, we got a happy hour at the bar on site. <laughs> Sounds fun. We'll go see if we can meet some peeps, maybe some dogs. Love that. All right, lots of cars. Completely packed parking lot. Popping y'all. What's going on? This is wild. <laughs> Happy hour with music today. That was perfect. Thank you so much. Can add that to the tab. Awesome. Cool. Appreciate that. Alright, we're walking out away from that happy hour feeling good. <laughs> and you know, we're gonna play some little tipsy pickle, you know? Yeah, we're naming stuff, dude. Pickle. <laughs> you're crazy. Tickle your pickle, you no, know? I man? knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> no, but that was so fun. We just got to make so many friends. We met a couple from England. They're like on the border of England and Scotland. They've been living in the United States for eight years and they just started full time RVing. She's a travel nurse, super cool. We met a Japanese couple with two of their sons that moved here. Um, and then we also met another couple next to us from Arizona, firefighters. So freaking cool. Um, but the drinks there were $3. 
it's just a little happy hour social event. Keys are there. Perfect. So anyways, love this part of RV life. Just a little social event. And now we pickle. Okay, they have this garden. How freaking cute. Want some tomatoes? Maybe a cucumber? <laughs> Everyone's still out from the event. Shuffleboard. This is like a racetrack for, I think like little electric cars. Time to tear it up, dude. You're tear going down. Good night. See ya. Take care. Those are our Japanese friends, you know. So nice. So cool. I'm trying to get some pickle in too, you know. It's, it's, I'm out of breath at altitude, maybe. I don't know. Wait. Game over. He couldn't stand the heat.